both of these teams really um we see you know a back line and three mid-range weapons coming out of optimal and we see um basically More or less the, same the same thing, thing coming out of yeah coming out a of a uh, tent on each side a back line on each side and then squeezer and pro and then kind of do these and mini you know kind of like the slaying midline and then the painting midline yep basically as far as possible from what we expected uh, as you could go we do have the baller we have the baller and the bubbles coming out of a uh, comet in the form of that uh, that charger that kept the charger with the uh, the baller and the, the tender belt it looks like um Optimal is going to come up to a strong start right now. Already really? past the 50 point mark. No hesitation. We we saw them get clams just like that already. Like to over 20 clams like in the first 30 seconds, and then they used their specials immediately. As soon as they got to that door, um, to the basket, they they popped their hammer, they popped their bubbles, they popped their ink storm. Everything came out, and I mean, it nets you to a 41 point push like that real quick. So really good work from Optimal in this like just right off the bat. Um, Comet is obviously going to have to respond well, you here. Know, you know the age-old adage, which is don't feel confident with an early lead in Splatoon. <laughs> because <laughs> there, is, there is plenty of time and plenty of ease and knockout coming from your opponents in these kind of situations. So, uh, you know, we, we could still see anything really out of this first game. Almost four minutes to go. Uh, specials popping off right now out of Comet. Uh, ooh, nice uh, punish from that bomb coming out of DJ on that uh, on that Booyah bomb, and another bubble push is going to to s not spell anything so because someone actually... on comment scored on the other side of the map. <laughs> so that was actually that was I'm pretty sure that those bubbles were on Optimal's basket, like they were defending with those bubbles. I'm pretty oh. sure Comet came around the right side off the catwalk and uh, actually tried to get a flank push, and they called it out really well. They, respond they responded quick enough to limit it to only one power clam. So okay. good on Optimal's part, but uh, the, the pressure is still mounting here for Comet. They have all these players here on the right side coming up to the door. Uh, good amount of power clams, and uh, they're preparing for a push. They burned some specials and now using a Booyah Bomb and Missiles at the same time, and I think this is going to be a good opportunity if they can get some picks off of it. Yeah, it looks like... Uh... Not exactly any picks. I do get one pick, but it ends up being a trade. A 3v3 situation right now as Comet is trying hard to make this happen. And they do get the jump. So someone does jump the show after he gets up in the air. I don't know if that was a misclick or if they're just trying to kind of hold back troll afterwards. Off screen, that pro that jumped to show was taken out. Uh, so that's going to be really good looks for Optimal. Once again, only suffering uh, a single power clam's worth of uh, yeah. enemy points out of optimal and then they, they right away you know they have a bunch of clams they have map control getting a little bit pressured here we'll see if dj ends up jumping out or not he does and he gets out successfully probably under a lot of pressure based on what we saw before the camera moved away from him and you know this is back to a neutral situation optimal though doing a really good job like can we talked about earlier on in the tournament you know a team in clam blitz that can make a push and then kind of hold map control and have some power clams ready to go soon afterwards to kind of continue the pressure the really good sign of a team that's in dominant position and if we look at the score if we look at how these pushes are going so far that is definitely what optimal has to bring to the table now we see a little neutral situation is going to favor some trades so and not another push from optimal but man this is this is pretty convincing so far from them yeah i think optimal got off that really quick and aggressive push at the beginning and since then they've been really focused on defense not letting any flanks come through for big damage not letting anything get past them kind of stalling out making comet use their specials a bit preemptively or They've just been really responsive on, on defense, and it's worked out great for them, limiting two pushes to only 30 points, whereas their one push got all the way down to the 41-point mark. Um, and yeah, now they are... Yeah, just because the, you know, these, these pushes from, from Comet have oftentimes consisted of just, like, a power clamp, and then death. Like, that's even, what we have. Power clamp isn't good. Even when they've had multiple power clamps, uh... Optima has just done a great job at not letting them get in with them, like just stopping them before they can get a jump point or letting them use specials, but just not letting them get anything off of them. They, they just really shut down on defense. Like they, Comet has had the opportunities. They've had their multiple power claims. They just had two a little bit before, but Optima finding the picks to get them out. And now look at Optima, they have full map control. They're actually pushing in with specials on, on Comet's side of the map with timer running down. They're not even letting them get out of their base to end this game. And they're just gonna 
jump in with the power <laughs> claim. It doesn't even get to end it. He just tried to do it for insurance, but there would have been a guarantee of no overtime, right? You know, if you yeah, he didn't well even get the that, chance. Really. <laughs> well, actually, it's kind of perfect because if he had gotten into the ground before the timer ended and thrown it in, um, over time would have still been able to persist. You know, if you open the basket before the game ends, the uh, the enemy team has the opportunity for overtime after it closes. But if you um, if you wait until overtime starts and then throw it in, you uh, you, you actually deny their overtime. Like overtime just ends, so that was yeah, that was, that was pretty well timed. Uh, it's just a, it's kind of funny where it's like. <laughs> what ended up happening was they didn't even have a power claim to start overtime anyway, so it just ended up like yeah, he was getting just saved there. by the bell from that like you know that strong arm to the face. <laughs> but hey, re really, I mean, I've said it a lot. Like just shut down defense. I think is what we saw from Optima after a really strong opening push. Yeah, and I think the one big push that was about to come out of Comet, we saw a uh, soldier with this patented uh, bubble combo just completely multi-killing everything and limiting it to the one power clam. I mean, that ended up being the case with a lot of those pushes where Comet was just barely able to scrape in one power clam and then everybody died. But that one push would have, act you know, I got confused at the time, but looking back at it, you know, you, you corrected me, made me realize that, you know, that would have been a big push out of Comet and, and soldier just got that multi-kill with the bubbles and that's what put the end to all of it. So. Yeah, really good play they, by them. They just did not let Comic get any like quick like tricks past them. They they yep. called out the flanks. They reacted to them really well. Uh, while the other team was stalling out the door, like they just were very coordinated on defense. Uh, they watched the angles they needed to, and they used specials at the right time. They they weren't uh, I, like on both offense and defense. I think they used specials at the right time just to. Um, either stop pushes or start pushes or even just right. keep mid and map and honestly i think it was just a very very strong game from from optimal but obviously it wasn't even it wasn't a knockout it wasn't anything that comment was like it hey, was just like really like, messed up it, it's like um it, it it's like a like a boxing or an mma match that there isn't a knockout but it's a very convincing decisive like decisive decision yeah you know I didn't, I didn't put you down for the count but i was just really controlling you, you basically your movement you, and basically like some george st saint pierre stuff where it's just winning 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 the time runs out and the other guy did nothing to yeah it's like you know i didn't knock you down and you stayed down but i was i was abusing my reach i was making you move the way i wanted you to move things of that nature scoring points on the judges and stuff like that or in this case the judge is just the score counter at the top of your screen all right well uh, we are going two into zones two. yep on skipper pavilion uh let's see how do you feel about these loadouts i think mostly similar stuff from both teams a lot of mid a lot of mid-range stuff uh with uh the sniper coming out from well, I think Comment that if, uh, if Dia doesn't make good use of a special, this could be a little bit of a bad matchup uh, for Optimal. And the reason I say that is because, I mean, as we all know, uh, Splatling versus Charger can tend to be a difficult matchup for the Splatling if things don't go perfect for it. Uh, not always, and it's that, 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 that has kind of not been always the case as of late, but... For this map, I think that is the, the case. It's a big, long, open map. It, you know, it, it, it favors snipers a lot. And if that Booyah Bomb isn't taking zone, I see it being an issue for Dia. That all being said, other members of Optimal are getting some pretty convincing kills right now. And we do see three specials out of the side of Comet. Um, this baller might get shut down before it can do anything, which it does really good defense. The Ink Storm might get killed, it does not. Uh, will they get the penalty? Ooh, the hammer coming out. Well, Sol Soldier's been playing really strong. I've been seeing him get some really nice kills with this bucket. Coming down to a splat bomb behind him, though, as uh, Comet will finally get that penalty. And uh, now it's what can Comet do to s to maintain this control? How can this sniper uh, shut down Dia? Like you said, that that I think sniper does have a small advantage over the spiling here. But can his teammates also follow up on it? like uh, Optimal is doing for a good amount of time there. We see a trade of some form as uh, the tent coming in from Keen now, pushing in, getting some ground, but 
Only the tent and the, and soldier yeah, alive well, here. I was, gonna, I was gonna say, I think that this charger needs to do a good job at keeping out, uh, keeping Dia from, you know, being able to use that special, but at the same time, I think the rest of his team had to deal with Keen. You know, Tenebrella is able to just push right in the zone, and if, uh, you know, looking at the comp, you know, you have Mini, you have Pro, um, and, and you have uh, a Slosher, that's not the best comp for stopping a tent from pushing forward, so you really have to get some picks of the tent. Either get some picks of the tent you really can't do anything by yourself, or you need to um, just team up on the tent to the point where you, you take him out so fast that he goes down just the same as any other uh, weapon. But it looks like that's kind of what they were able to do. You know, they were the, the Comet lost the zone, but they stayed alive afterwards, so they were able to get some kills and in the end be the ones alive. And now they are the ones that are about to take the lead. Uh, so really good at you know outplaying that 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 kind of scary matchup for a second there. DJ gets taken out, King gets taken out. Soldier with the baller is probably not going to even if he doesn't get taken out. Yeah, he can't even reach the zone. And what seemed like a pretty dominant match from um, Optimal, especially when they were able to just retake the zone so quickly and stuff. Uh, Comet was able to to kind of let let Optimal waste the resources on zone without getting enough kills, and that really led. To Comet being able to kind of, kind of, if we're going with more, uh, you know, combat sports, uh, <laughs> kind of thing, you know, they allow them to like kind of like stuff that takedown attempt. To, you know, it's like, oh yeah, sure, we're gonna let you lunge forward and take, you know, take all this space and push me back, but we're going to, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of dodge the the damage that's being done to us. Let you kind of like, you know, fall on your face, and then we're gonna be the ones in the dominant position afterwards. And uh, we're down to another one one on Black Battery. Black Valley Tower Control, neither team probably wants this to be what their uh, their game rides on, Slimy, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, this is going to be, I think, a weird uh, map for both of these comps, let's see, or both of these teams in the comps they like to run. But, uh, right, because like, how... where are the close range weapons that can come out of? It's definitely going to come down to which team can adjust better here. Uh, let's see if they have comp switches on either side or even just if they can manipulate their play style to adapt to this map, it's going to be very important yeah, like, to see. Like, I'm just thinking about what Optimal can run, because I know them pretty well, and I, I know Keen can run, you know, he can he can tone it, scale it down in range, you know, he can go from running Tent to running, uh, you know, like, regular Brella and stuff like that, but yeah. honestly, regular Brella is not the best weapon for this map. There are so many close-range splash damage weapons that just completely uh, ignore the threat of your shield, and we know that uh, Comet can run those, so I... I he might still end up going with Tent. Um, obviously, if Soldier gets the bubble combo off, that's going to be really good. But, you know, uh, when it comes to Squeezer and such, you might have to just go Slash your Deco, which isn't the most aggressive and effective weapon here. Uh, Dio, we know, can go some close range weapons, but typically you do want to have that backliner uh, kind of camping the enemy side of the base during pushes. Uh, and we know DJ can go some close range weapons, but he, he typically tends to be on those kind of mid range kind of support roles. So, I think it really comes down to like you know is DJ gonna be able to go some kind of blaster or close range weapon or something of some sort? Are we gonna see like a tri slasher come out of somebody? Like yeah. I'm not really sure what we're gonna see at optimal. I expect to see a more straightforward you know close range weapons you know pushing power out of Comet coming out of this. So I, I guess we just really have to see which team can adapt better to the map and mode and make something happen. And we see a Cunder and a slashing machine. Uh, and we actually don't see the most crazy close range aggressive cop coming out of Comet. So this. The, the, the weapon matchups might actually not be as crazy as we thought they would be, or as least that I thought they would be. Um, so this could very well come down to just which team's better, and we don't really have much matchup complications to worry about. Yeah. So obviously this Junior starting really quickly off with an armor as two go down on Optimal's side. Uh, show kind of just painted around this right side right now, but uh, now two of Kama go down. So kind of an even-ish start to the, to the match here. I, I honestly do think we we do see enough change. Like they definitely went more short range. Both teams, uh, Kensa undercover and Machine, obviously not being quite the mid range mid range weapons that they were running before, as well as Comet on T Tech and Junior. So I think they definitely adjusted their comps, but it's gonna see who can do more with it, who can use their specials. I think specials are gonna be very important in this game. Both sides having yeah. armor, a stingray, as well as uh, both. Members of both teams are running weapons that kind of rely 
on their specials to an extent. You know, you have the Junior, um, you have the Kunder, which, well, not necessarily the Kunder, but the, the Custom Dilly Spelcher and the Kunder kind of combined. It's like, you know, they need to have specials popping off. And then, of course, you have the Junior uh, that's going to be able to need to, you know, use those armors if it can't, you know, get splat bomb kills. But that all being said, uh, Comet is pushing very hard right now. And if Show doesn't go down, this could be a little bit complicated trying to stop this team from pushing right now. The Charger is trying to take out Dia. Dia doing a good job getting aggressive. There are a lot of jumps into this tower, though. Dia gets one pick. He gets traded on, and I don't know where the other members of Optimal are. That It seemed like they had a wipe. And Oh, yeah, wow. And that's another wipe. That, uh, that's the game. That seems like Optimal had the defense, right? Like, they, they took out everybody. It was just one. It was just a Charger on tower. And those jump-ins kept showing up. And I don't know if someone from off-screen to the right uh, kind of, um, you know, was sharking or, 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 you know, they the person who died first kind of swam.